What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Ashley G, and this is another episode of I Finally Made It. And I'm here with my co host. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Mac Diesel. We back again, ready for another episode. As usual, we're here again to tell you guys about all the things that we so love about this institution, Texas Southern University. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but today, especially, we want to kind of give you guys some tips because, you know, why would we be here talking to you guys if we weren't at least going to try and help you out a little bit with your journey, right? Definitely. Like, Everybody needs some type of help. Yeah, it's like we, we're doing this. I finally made it, but we're not going to tell you how we made it. Right, right, right. right. Absolutely. <laughs> exactly. It, it just seems a little backwards. Yeah. So today, this segment is going to be how we build our resumes. How do we break into the industry? You know, how mm. do we build that real? You know, a lot of people ask those questions, especially going into media. How do you do these things? Because a lot of people aren't really helping you to try and do this yeah. stuff right how do you do this where do i start you know what kind of tools do i need and i mean going going on and on and on but you know it's a lot that we could we could we could tell people and it just depends on if you take it or not because a lot of people take advice or they hear advice and they don't actually use it to their advantage so you know everybody's different yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. But I hope you guys are watching this and and take the advice because I'm I'm going to tell you we're going to tell you some some good stuff. I promise. So Absolutely. stay locked in for sure. Absolutely. Um for me, I think one of the biggest things and one thing that I figured out since applying to jobs and trying to break into the industry is I've been noticing that a lot of people just want you to have a whole lot of experience. Um, like that's like the surefire way to get a job is to just have experience. But as we all know, that's a little bit hard to come by. And so, right. It's a lot easier said than done. Just get a whole lot of experience because a bunch of jobs. It's not that easy. Like I, I know from personal experience it's not that easy applying for internships, trying to convince people that, yeah, I don't have a lot of skills, but uh, just let me come in and learn. You know, a lot of, I don't know what it is, but a lot of people, they're not if, really if, into that. If I could give it an example, I think it's kind of like, you know, when you apply for a scholarship for school or, you know, just something big that you're trying to apply for. When you apply for an internship, it's like, oh, well, you know, you have to meet this requirement, this requirement. You got to have worked you know, in the, in a specific spot for a couple of years, this and that. And it's just like, uh, you know, I didn't really do that, but I mean, I'm hoping that I can get some type of credibility for what I do have. And a lot of places don't take just the bare minimum. They want you to have like sometimes like top notch stuff. And it's just like, well, you know, I wasn't fortunate enough to get that or right. be in that yeah, position. Yeah, so. yeah. This is what I'll say to that though. When there aren't, a tremendous amount of opportunities put in front of you. And that's happened to me and to a lot of other HBCU students where it's just not as many opportunities. Mm -hmm. Well, it feels like that. You don't know is you don't know about them. That's really what it is. No one's coming to you and saying what, where a lot of other places, you know, kind of have that where they're more, they more facilitate you getting into internships here is really, you got to kind of grind it out on your own. Right. But one of the things that you can do is try and take advantage of the things that they do have on campus and then try and do that as best as possible. Absolutely. So I agree. With like that. try and grind, grind out everything you can here, like, you know, on your campus or any anything local or with a mentor that you may have someone that, you know, that's in the industry try and grind them down and and get in with them and have them uh have you do projects or right. do something or try and teach you or just shadowing um because you can put that on your resume and it makes it, like you can say that you've worked on you know such and such and such mm-hmm. with this company that you're such said mentor worked for or you know or if you're working with uh and you're 
in college, you know, with your departments or whatever, you can put that you've done work for, you know, the School of Communications right. or for KTSU2, whatever it may be. Um, and if you have a title that's even better, put that title on there. Or if it just says intern, intern makes it, if you're applying for internships, having intern stuff on your resume makes a difference because internships actually, some of them, not all of them, because there's some internships where they prefer you to just be fresh and not have any experience really. Yeah. But a lot of them, they want, like, if you have other internship experience, they feel that as a plus. Mm. So even if it's not a formal internship, you can put it on your resume where you have the title intern or production intern or, yeah. you know, whatever it may be. And it still counts because you were doing intern type work. Right. And it's like on your resume. Yes, they're checking and making sure if everything is accurate. But at the same time, you can, you know, accentuate, you know? What do you mean by that? What do you mean when you say accentuate? Well, obviously, you've you've done certain things while you've been in college. Right. And, like, let's say you have produced a show or let's say you've shot it, like, you've edited a show up and put it on, you know, uh, a streaming or, like, on YouTube or Instagram or something like that. Right. You can always say, like, you know, I've produced, shot, edited, um, and I've, you know, raised social media engagement, right. you know, kind of just embellish, you know, because you did those things. Right, right. But it sounds fancy. Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. That's going to catch a, uh, uh, you know, the people that are running the internships. It's going to really catch their eye because I'm like, oh, well, you know, this person did this and this and. They also did this, so it's just kind of like gives you that upper hand, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, as far as my experience from, you know, I haven't, well, I'll take that back. I'm doing an internship with the school right now, which is in um, RTF. Hey, which, that's uh, nice. With Professor Val. And, um, you know, I'm doing a lot of different stuff. Like this, for example, is, is one of them, the, you know, podcast show. And then um, having it on the radio, it's... um. It's definitely been a fun experience. Um, I know before when I first started looking for an internship, I didn't know what it was I was trying to do. I knew I wanted to be, you know, on on the radio or a podcast. So, you know, just trying to look for that and, you know, talking to different in, internship um, companies. A lot of them were just like stuff that I had nothing I knew nothing about. Or that I have never heard of before. Like, I know one of them was like an insurance thing. But um, I just knew where my heart was um, mentally. So I was like, hey, like, I really need to do what I want to focus on. So right. yeah. it's just, it's it's hard to keep yourself on track. But, you know, once you know what you want to do, it be, it gets a lot easier. That's definitely true. Because once, especially with RTF, radio, television, and film, mm -hmm. right? Or even ERM, where you have so many different options, or broadcast broadcast journalism. There's so many different avenues that you can go into. Once you kind of figure out what lane you want to go into, it becomes a lot easier with the internships. But with internships, I would encourage people to find some variety. Try a few things, because you just never really know, especially when you're first getting into college. And that's the other thing. If you're going to start doing internships, start doing them as soon as possible. Yes. Do not wait. Don't wait. Absolutely. Like, obviously, you only need the the one semester with the internship course. But don't let that be, like, the only time you try and do an internship. If you can do extra, do extra. Like, don't just go to class. Absolutely. It'll That's definitely... The, Help you in the long run, at least. Like, right. It's not going to cut it. Just going to class is not going to cut it. And that's why so many people say, oh, college is a scam. It's because you didn't do anything <laughs> besides go to your dorm, sleep, go to the calf, eat, and then go to class and barely pay attention and then turn in some assignments, do half okay, yeah. you know, putting half effort, not even putting 100% of your effort 
Because I guarantee you, the people that are putting in 100% of their effort into their classes, they're doing extra. Absolutely. Well, that's that's a very true statement, you know, and it's always that saying that, you know, there's other people that are sleeping and there's other people that are putting in the work to get where they're trying to be. So, you know, don't be that. Yes. Those people that don't do, you know, the extra mile. Right. And trying to break into the industry already is so difficult. Oh, my gosh. And it's like you have to put in the work. You have to put in the time. So many people talk about paying your dues. We've had people come to the school, um, like director of CBS Sports. Um, they want to come and talk and, you know, try and tell us about opportunities or whatever, which is really nice that he came by and was able to speak with us. But – One of the things that he said was a lot of people are looking for you to pay your dues. You know, they're not just going to let you in the door right off the bat. But as we know, that's kind of like gatekeeping. And if that's one thing that a lot of people are talking about now is the fact that in the industry, there's so much gatekeeping. Yeah. And so it's like, while yes, it is very annoying and it shouldn't be a thing. Because it is a thing, you have to do everything you can to make sure that that is not an obstacle for you. So if someone is trying to gatekeep you, oh, here's my resume. I have all these things. I've done all these things already. So you, there's, you have nothing to say to me. <laughs> <laughs> so That's if you can, right? Obviously, for, for us, COVID happened, and it kind of made everything, like, really dumb. The, yeah. What was it? The middle of our sophomore year, it was, like, it was done, like, COVID took everything Everything out. just. And then junior year, done, gone, nothing. <laughs> out of there. Senior year, finally. <laughs> but wait, wait, wait. Last semester, half the people aren't even really still on campus. At all. So this is the very first semester where it feels like a legitimate opportunity to actually secure uh, internships. Right. Like. And not remote. And that's the other thing. A lot of people have been doing remote internships. As good as those are, they only give you so much because mm-hmm. it's not hands-on. You're not there. You're not on a set. You're not lear- like learning from industry professionals right. right there next to you. You know, you're not seeing their workflows right there. So, yes, there are some positives because you learn how to do all the online stuff and how a lot of people are doing stuff now, like, video chats and video calls and being more comfortable with that. That is yeah. all good with, you know, remote learning and learning how to transfer files between, you know, hundreds of gigs of files between all these people. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you live on opposite sides of the, the country, you know, that kind of thing. Right. So it's good for that. But when it comes to just getting those technical skills, I definitely say you want to, if you can get in the door into like a studio or a TV station or uh, a set, a documentary set, a film set, right? Anything that you can do. If you're RTF major for sure, if you're a broadcast journalism major, do as many stories as you can. If you're a writer, write as many stories as you can. Like there's so many things that you can cover on campus that qualifies as experience. Like if you can write, if you're a good and even if you can't and you're trying to be better, all the more reason to write. Just do it. Right? Just, just try because you never know where it's going to lead if you don't try. If, you, if you're sitting there contemplating, oh, well, you know, I've I, I seen this and I, I want to write like this, but I don't write like this. You're never going to get anywhere because you're going to be stuck in that one position of trying to be like somebody else. You don't even know your own potential. So at least try to put your stuff out there, even if it's right. not – you know, the best thing in the world. Like, anything is better than nothing. Exactly. That, it's kind of like, almost like turning in a, a an assignment for a, a grade. You don't want to just not turn it in. Like, you want to at least try to get, you know, a, a C at max. But, you know, everybody's yeah. different. And you realize that the more you do it, the better you get at it. Right. And you start being able to crank these things out and you start getting positive feedback. And you're like, wait a minute, I might actually be good at this. Consistency. That's all it is. It's really, honestly, just consistency. Once you get in the habit of doing things, then it just starts. It just flows. And people notice, you know, a lot of people 
they'll grind Mm -hmm. and maybe it seems like they're not getting the shine that they want right off the bat. Right. But all I have to say is just keep going. Absolutely. Do not stop. Even if it goes past these four years and you graduate and still nothing pops for you, don't stop grinding. Especially if you're a writer or if you're like a journalist or you're trying to get in front of the camera, you have to go out and do it yourself. Right. Grab your camera. Even I don't care if you're not a good if, even if you're not an RTF major, you need to know how to do some basic editing so you can edit up your own story. Absolutely. Because that's what they're looking for now, right? Uh, yeah. Self I mean, as far as well, I mean, from my from my own experience, you know kind of like jumping into photography, like, you know, I've talked about before from transferring from what I was to here and then learning everything again. I thought I was bad at photography. You know what I mean? Like I thought I was just terrible because I didn't really know what, you know, goes into it. When I was learning it before, they were just saying, oh, do this, do this, you know, take this picture, do it at this angle. And it's just like, okay, but where's the deeper part of this photography? Like, if with me, when it comes to photography, I'm trying to tell a story or I'm trying to show you something from my eye, like something that I've seen. Yeah. So when I when it comes to photo- or when it came to photography for, for me, I was looking to learn it on a deeper level, try to get better at it, practice as much as I could. That way, when I start doing it more and more, it gets better. There's different edits. Um, you know, you get more exposure. Yeah. Um, you know, and not just in photography, but for music, for like radio, podcast, anything that you're into. When you do it consistently on a consistent basis and practice as much as you as you tell yourself to, you know, the the sky's the limit. Yeah. It's only gonna go up from yeah. there. So yeah. it's really about putting in the time, and that's for everything, whether it be multimedia journalism, photojournalism. Uh, radio, television, movies, documentaries, absolutely. Um, producing, sound engineering, whatever it may be, it doesn't matter. A and R. Uh, so many things. The list goes you, on. You and on. you have to practice. You yeah. have to put in the time. There is no way around it. No At way all. around it. You can't. You can't even jump over it. You you're not. It's not gonna happen. You got to do it regardless, no matter how much, you know, you get lazy and say, well, well, this and this. No, there's no excuse. Yeah. That saying of you get out what you put in. That's exactly how college is. Exactly. You get out what you put in. And the word quit doesn't exist. You can't. As soon as you quit and someone is passing you up. Yeah. No joke. That's that's one thing about this media industry is you have to stay on top of your game, on top of everything. Because, honestly, uh, everything's moving so fast um, with the way the industry is going (laughs) that you have to keep up. Absolutely. Especially with the way media is. Like, this day and age, like, technology is, is getting crazier and crazier by the minute. We're about to have flying cars in the next probably like what ten years maybe, even even longer than that. You know they actually have one now. Really, they do. I had no clue. I had I, no idea. I saw it recently. I saw an article about this flying car. It's a little rinky dink looking. <laughs> I you won't see me in it. <laughs> I am okay being on the ground. Absolutely. I'll walk before I fly in a flying car. You no, know, I like the four wheels on my car. Yeah, absolutely. I but think I did. they work just fine. I do have a question for you. So I know we're talking about, you know, staying consistent and, you know, resumes and um, putting in the work and having uh, experience. So with resumes, I want to ask you, what are some things, and, and this is just based on your experience and what you've done before or maybe have learned, but on, your, on some of your resumes, what are some of the things that, you know, you put on there or what do you think are important to put on your resume? And then I'll tell you mine. 
So, actually, funny story, because I actually got yelled at recently because my resume didn't have enough on it. Wow. I I know. Um, I know. They said you didn't have enough? It. I, I'll tell the story. Okay. So, <laughs> recently I've been in this long interview process, and in one of my interviews, um, the gentleman... What they were, we were talking about my experiences because that's what most of these interviews are. Right. Tell me about your experience. What have you done? That's it. That's all that. that's all they want to talk about. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know the I'm in the the interview with three people, and one of the people, a lady, asked me, um, because I've had an interview with her before. Mm-hmm. She asked me, you know you know, you haven't even mentioned your audio experience and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it's not even on your resume. And then the guy is like, hold on a second. You have audio experience? It's like, you know, we're looking for audio people, right? (laughs) I wouldn't have known that because it's not on your resume. (laughs) It's like, yeah, I I went to Ithaca College. What? You went to Ithaca? It was like, my gosh. Because for me, I'm thinking this is all the way back from 2013. Yeah. So you have to understand yeah. for me, I'm not thinking this is necessarily relevant or recent enough. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, I'm not putting this on there because I just recently decided, you know, to do all these resumes for these different companies that I want to work for. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm not thinking that I necessarily, I mentioned that I have audio expertise. Right. Right. But I didn't, I didn't put an actual education line <laughs> and I didn't actually put like my, like the job position that I have right. as an audio, uh, in recording services as an audio engineer. Mm-hmm. And they were just kind of taken aback and blown away by that. And then it made me really realize that it doesn't matter. Put everything that's applicable to this job <laughs> on your resume. <laughs> if you're for, if you're applying for production, put everything. The whole kitchen sink. And I was like, is it okay if it's longer than two pages? He was like, yes, it's okay if it's long. I think it's different company to company. It depends on who's looking at it. But if you have relevant experience and it's a lot, it's a long list, Mm -hmm. put it all on there. Absolutely. I can agree with that. Or try and put as much as possible without it looking ridiculously cluttered. Mm. Um, Because people like to see that you've done multiple things. Right. Like for me, that was my biggest selling point with a lot of, you know, with these interviews that I recently had was I have a lot of versatile skills. I can do a lot of different things. And so that was what really helped me get this new job, which is really cool. Absolutely. Uh, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, but no, it's, it's like you have to just make sure that you put, everything relevant on there don't leave anything off don't doubt yourself yeah well to kind of piggyback off of what you just said you know with the whole you know production thing and everything like that you know this internship is probably the first thing i've done with production if i'm being 100 percent honest this is the only thing i've ever done with production going to school where I was, you know, I wasn't presented that type of opportunity. Right. I wasn't even thinking about internships or any right. of that. Mm-hmm. I was just solely focused on going to school, graduating, and working. That, that was it. Right. But, you know, looking back on it now, it's kind of like I wish I would have found this kind of stuff earlier. Because I f- for, for me, just personally, I feel like I'm late. Because now it's just like, oh, well, you know, why am I just not doing it? But I remember, you know, all those times going to to the classes that I was taking and then just working at all these different spots. And I've probably worked a total of six different jobs, not knowing what I wanted to do at the time. Right. Yeah. But I was I was super interested in photography, like I had stated before. And then um, that was just it. And then, you know. I've worked I worked at a golf course. I worked at, uh, you know what the wash tub is? No, I don't. So what? That it's basically just a car wash place. That's oh, okay, all. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So I it worked. Makes sense. 
I worked at a, a golf course. I worked at a, a car wash. Um, I know you probably heard of Five Below. Yeah. I worked there. I did overnight stocking there. And then um, I worked at Texas Roadhouse. Which okay. is like a state the steakhouse. I like Texas Roadhouse. They yeah. Good. So I was working I was working, you know, job after job after yeah. job, not doing what I was passionate about. And the thing about photography is it's so hard to get, you know, make it a business or make it like a job because you really have to be consistent in it and and you know, just different i guess you could say because yeah there's so many different photographers out there with photography i think it's all about your branding that as well that is probably the hardest thing you know as far as photography what i've dealt with that was just super difficult branding you know um getting your name out there having you know your watermark and everything like that and it's just like golly like where where can i go from here but just to kind of like shorten it up a little bit. I, I agree with what you're saying. Um, as far as experience, if you're going for a specific job and you haven't worked in any type of, you know, in that field area, I would say try now. Do it now. Make it happen you on your own. Absolutely. With, because the, with phones and all different kind of things. Yeah. Go on YouTube. It literally tells you exactly how to do these things. And man, you say you worked at all the jobs. You know, I've worked at a call center. I've worked at a movie theater. Yeah. I've worked at Home Depot. I've worked at HEB. I've worked at JCPenney. I've worked at so many different places in the last, what, 10 years now? Yeah. Seven, eight years now? Yeah. I'm not going to say 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, since I've graduated from high school and I wasn't able to go to college for five years, all that time I was working whatever job absolutely but i found twitch i found live streaming and that i'm going to tell you that actually ended up helping me in the long run because it Such made me difference. stand out at one of my internships which look i'm gonna tell you everything that you do matters <laughs> yeah, absolutely everything Put it that on you your do resume. matters because when i i'm <laughs> telling you man i learned that live stream stuff and it helped me in my internship it's crazy who would have thought who would have thought? thought who would have thought but that's that's how it goes. That's how resume building is. Absolutely. And that's, I guess that's that's, that's part just, of life, right? That's part of college. That's how it goes. Is you kind of have to do these things. You have to mm -hmm. put in that extra work. Is is sucky as it is that you have to put in all this extra time. Right. But that's part. That's what makes college so difficult. I think that's what makes it such a a long arduous process is because you have to put in more than what they advertise and even even if it is a long process you know it all it all works out at the end like i i can't say you know for everybody but it, it'll it'll work itself at the at, at the end so exactly and i guess that brings us to the end absolutely. of the show absolutely well guys you know what time it is um it's been great talking about resume building. Yep. You know, you can follow us at KTSU underscore two, and you can follow me at Ashley G the Supreme. And what can they find? My Instagram. At? I messed up last time. It's captain underscore Mac 46, not 23, but 46. Got it right this time. Yes, Got it right absolutely. this time. Absolutely. Make sure you guys follow us. You know, this show drops Thursdays at five, um, or at least we try and get it around five yes. and on Thursday. I try my best. <laughs> I'm a busy person, guys. Very busy. Very busy. <laughs> very. But that's going to do it for us. We really appreciate you all for watching and listening. Uh, that's going to do it for us on episode three of I Finally Made It on KTSU 2 The Voice. Peace, y'all.